Hello students, welcome to Adi Chemistry Online Coaching. I am Aditya Vardhan, the founder of AdiChemistry.com from Varangal. Today, we will explore the hybridization and bonding of chlorine trifluoride, a fascinating T-shaped molecule. Let us systematically and logically build the concept step by step and understand why ClF3 has its uncommon T-shaped molecular configuration. Let us begin with some key points about the ClF3 molecule. It is an interhalogen compound and a T-shaped molecule with sp3d hybridization in chlorine atom. Just keep them in your mind forever. Before delving into hybridization part, let us analyze the structure of ClF3 using the Lewis model. In this molecule, the central atom is chlorine. It contributes three unpaired electrons for bond formation, while each fluorine atom contributes one electron, resulting in three bonds formed by the chlorine atom. Of course, there are also two lone pairs on the chlorine atom while each fluorine atom has three lone pairs. It is important to recall that lone pairs refer to electron pairs that are not involved in bond formation. However, the Lewis model alone does not provide information about molecular shapes or bond angles. To understand these aspects, we need to employ valence bond theory and the concept of hybridization originally proposed by Linus Pauling. Now, you may ask the question, how do we know that chlorine forms three bonds while fluorine forms only one bond? To answer these questions, let us go through a few details about fluorine and chlorine atoms. The electronic configuration of fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. There are seven electrons in the outer shell with one unpaired electron. It contributes this unpaired electron for covalent bond formation. Thus, fluorine can form one covalent bond and its valency is 1. For chlorine atom, the atomic number is 17 and the ground state electronic configuration is neon 3s2 3p5. However, it is worth noting that the third shell also contains an empty D subshell. Therefore, the electronic configuration can be neon 3s2 3p5 3d0. We can also say like that. And again, there is one unpaired electron in one of the 3p orbitals of chlorine. However, chlorine forms three bonds in ClF3, employing the presence of three unpaired electrons. This raises the question of how and why chlorine can form three bonds in this context. Let us now address the how part of the question. One of the electrons in the 3p subshell becomes unpaired and undergoes excitation into one of the 3D orbitals resulting in the outer electronic configuration of 3s2, 3p4, 3d1. This state is referred to as the first excited state of chlorine. Now you can observe there are three unpaired electrons. Therefore, chlorine can form three bonds in the first excited state. But before making bonds, the chlorine atom undergoes sp3d hybridization in the first excited state involving the mixing of one s orbital, three p orbitals and one d orbital. This results in the formation of five sp3d hybrid orbitals arranged in a trigonal bipyramidal geometry. 
and each of these sp3d hybrid orbitals comprises 20% s character 60% p character and 20% d character in trigonal bipyramidal geometry three of sp3d hybrid orbitals are arranged in a trigonal plane by making 120 degrees of angle with each other these are referred to as equatorial orbitals while the remaining two are positioned above and below the trigonal plane these are referred to as axial orbitals and these axial orbitals make 90 degrees of angle with the equatorial orbitals now one more question what is special about trigonal bipyramidal geometry why not other orientations are possible yes there are three possible symmetrical arrangements for five orbitals in space the first one is pentagonal planar geometry as shown on the screen here each sp3d orbital makes 72 degrees of angle with the other orbitals and the second one is square pyramidal arrangement here four orbitals are arranged in a square plane while the fifth one projects above this plane resulting in 90 degrees of angles with each other the last one is trigonal bipyramidal arrangement it was already discussed now we have to choose the most stable and symmetrical arrangement among them since the orbitals are going to be occupied by electrons they must be oriented in space so as to minimize repulsions that is the angles between them should be as larger as possible therefore the clear winner is trigonal bipyramidal arrangement with 120 degrees and 90 degrees of angles with each other and hence the sp3d orbitals prefer to orient in trigonal bipyramidal geometry now our task is to distribute seven electrons into five sp3d hybrid orbitals initially we distribute one electron into each hybrid orbital and then we proceed to pair the remaining electrons this involves filling of five sp3d hybrid orbitals with one electron each until they become half filled subsequently the last two electrons can be paired up this can be done in three distinct ways each leading to a different spatial arrangement ultimately determining the final shape of the molecule these three possible pairing scenarios involve either both electrons entering the axial orbitals or one electron going into an axial orbital while the other enters an equatorial one are both electrons occupying the two equatorial orbitals consequently three unique arrangements as shown on the screen will emerge in every arrangement there are two full filled hybrid orbitals and the other three are half filled in general the full filled orbitals with two electrons won't be involved in normal covalent bond formation unless there is a chance for dative bonding remember that in clf3 there are no dative bonds whereas the half filled hybrid orbitals will make bonds by pairing with electrons from fluorine atoms thus formed electron pairs are involved in the bond formation and hence are referred to as bond pairs denoted as bp the full filled orbitals are referred to as lone pairs denoted as lp 
since the lone pair of electrons are attracted by only one nucleus their electron density spreads over more space when compared to that of bond pairs the electron density of bond pair is confined to a lesser volume as they are attracted by the two bonding nuclei now just observe the changes in other arrangements also now we have to choose the most stable arrangement among the three based on the strength of repulsions between these electron pairs you know that lone pairs occupy more space and exert stronger repulsions compared to bond pairs therefore the order of strength of repulsion is lone pair lone pair greater than lone pair bond pair which in turn greater than bond pair bond pair repulsions now look at the arrangement on the left hand the lone pairs are at 180 degrees whereas in the middle one they are at 90 degrees and in the right one the lone pairs are making an angle of 120 degrees hence just based on these repulsions the left hand arrangement must be more stable followed by the right hand side arrangement however we should also take into account repulsions between lone pairs and bond pairs to arrive at final conclusion each lone pair in the left hand side arrangement experiences three lone pair and bond pair interactions at 90 degrees whereas in the middle and the right one each lone pair experiences only two lone pair and bond pair interactions at 90 degrees by considering all of these interactions we can conclude that the right hand side arrangement is more stable than the other arrangements okay let us rotate the arrangement for more clarity now let us see the overlapping pattern the cl atom forms three sigma bonds with three fluorine atoms by using the half filled hybrid orbitals as a result the chlorine trifluoride molecule is said to have trigonal bipyramidal structure with the two lone pairs occupying equatorial positions or just by considering only the arrangement of bond pairs it is said to have the t shape and because of repulsion between lone pairs and bond pairs the angle between axial clf and equatorial clf is decreased to 87.5 degrees once again the chlorine trifluoride an interhalogen compound is a t shaped molecule and the central cl atom undergoes sp3d hybridization that's all for now visit adhikemistry.com for more information on this topic or search for adhikemistry sp3d hybridization and clf3 molecule don't forget to like share and subscribe you can also find links to worksheets and other study material in the description section If you find it difficult to reach them don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section or drop an email at adikmg@gmail.com 
I also suggest you to visit brahmakumaris.com to learn raj yoga meditation freely and awaken your inner divine powers to lead a happy and successful life. All the best.